Uh, so this morning um, I wanted to talk about um, something called the Healthy Mind Platter. So the Healthy Mind Platter is a framework that I came across when I was doing um, the studies around neuroscience with the Neuro Leadership Institute. And right now with everything going on, uh, our focus and emphasis on mental wellness is pretty high. So I found it a really good, useful tool for thinking about mental wellness. Uh, and a couple of different ways that you can use the tool to support that piece. So like I said, apologies that you can't see the visual now while I'm talking, that might have helped. We'll do an edit of this and we'll put the visual in so that will make more sense. Um, and then we'll save it to the YouTube page where all our other videos are. So it'll be there as a reference for you for, forevermore. And I shall delete the two previous versions. Uh, so the Healthy Mind Platter is a tool that was developed by um, Daniel Siegel and David Rock to look at what you need that kind of the words they use were the best diet for your mental wellness so it's based on the idea that um in countries right now there are guidelines for nutrition right so you can look at um the foods that you should eat to be healthy and they're either shown as pyramids or sometimes they're shown as plates to kind of divided up into segments sections and segments and so on so the um the idea with the healthy mind platter is that it works the same way so it's seven activities that through their research and their kind of um, background and understanding they felt would be the some seven activities that would promote mental well-being uh, and so i'm going to talk about each of the seven um and why they're different and why they matter based on what i understand from the studies that i've done I find it a really useful framework in a couple of different ways. One is to think about planning your time to try and think about how you uh, cover the bases, so to speak. Um, but the other is just as a, as a sense check. So I have had conversations with people when we've gone through the tool and they've been like, gee, seven's a lot. How do I fit seven in? Well, just like with the food platter, like you don't eat every category of food every time you sit down to eat a meal. I don't think we're suggesting that you need to hit every one of the seven activities every day. There's an awful lot, seven's an awful lot to figure out fitting in. But for me, it's a useful review tool to say, kind of, where have I been for the last couple of weeks? And is there a particular category that I haven't done? Is there something that I'm letting slide? And do I want to try and be intentional about fitting that into the coming week or the week after so that I can make sure I'm kind of ticking the box on all seven activities? So that would be my suggestion in terms of thinking about how you use the framework. Don't worry too much about trying to tick all seven off every day, but use it to inform how you're spending your time. And maybe if you have a choice for an hour or so on what do I do, using the framework can help you think about, well, rather than doing watching TV, which I've been doing a lot of, which would count as downtime, I'm actually going to go and do some sport or do some activity or do some play which I'll talk about in a second. So there are seven activities that they identified that are kind of in the tool. And I think a few are more obvious than others. So I'm going to go through each of them in turn and talk about kind of why and how they show up and what that, and in some cases what that means. So the first one on the list is sleep, which those of you that know me will know I've got very passionate about sleep. Um, sleep, your brain does most of its work when you're asleep, right? It's when it processes information, it's when it creates memory, it's when it regulates you, it does all kinds of things when you're sleeping. If you don't get enough sleep, you will not have the same mental capacity and mental functioning that you would. So sleep is kind of number one on the list and I will keep talking about sleep every time I probably tune into uh, Facebook Live because sleep is so important to our mental wellness and well-being. So if you're interested in sleep, there's lots of studies out there. I saw a really good uh, infographic on Facebook uh, a week or so ago, which I'll see if I can find around some tips for having healthy sleep. Uh, but sleep is the first thing that you need. And, and the adage that you need eight hours is a bit of a misnomer. Adults need somewhere between six to nine, depending on who you are and what you do. But you really do need to get enough sleep. So if you do nothing else, don't do any of the other six, sleep is a good place to start. So that's the first one. 
The second one that might come as no surprise is physical time. So physical time is doing physical activity. Um, and that probably isn't a surprise to many of us. That is correlated to mental well-being and mental health. There is a link between your body and your brain. And so doing physical things, releases endorphins and all kinds of other chemicals which are good for your body and for your brain. So some portion of your time needs to be spent doing physical activities, playing sports, running, running around outside, you know, digging in the garden, anything that's physical in nature. So sleep, physical time, probably two that we can get our heads around pretty quickly. The third one I put on the list um, is connecting time. So connecting time is around having social relationships. So funnily enough, um, one of the things that they studied is what helped people live longer in life. And the number one factor in the causal factor in, in the research they did was not what we eat or how much exercise we do, although those, those things clearly do matter. It was actually about our support networks and our social connections. So connecting time is really important for mental well-being. We know that there's a connection between that and depression and other things. Right now, we're in the middle of a global pandemic. We're in our own bubble. You you are now in Newfoundland allowed to double bubble which will extend your ability to connect to people particularly physically but those times that you spend connecting to people are fundamental to health and well-being so whether you're having your virtual coffee hours or you're just chatting to a friend on the phone or you're going for a walk six feet apart whatever you're doing or going with your family bubble that time also needs to be there and to be present for you to be mentally well so those first three, I think, you know, most people will be like, yeah, okay, sure, that makes sense to me. The remaining four are a little different. So the fourth one is playtime. And sometimes when I talk about this, people are like, playtime? Like, I'm not a kid anymore, really, I have to do playtime? But play is such an incredibly important aspect of how we learn and develop as human beings. So rather than seeing it as something frivolous, which means it might be one of the seven that you put at the bottom of your list, playtime is about being spontaneous and imaginative, right? So it's about doing things off the cuff. It's about exploration. It's about experimentation. And what they learned when they looked at playing children is our ability to play is often coupled with our ability to adapt. So it's through play that we learn adaptive behaviours. And so it's equally important for us as adults to have time to play and experiment and do things differently and try new things as it would be when we we're children. So that time to play with no consequence, with no goal in the mind, no outcome, no expectation, right? Just seeing what happens and what we do in the moment is an equally important part of what makes us healthy. And I don't know about you, but for me, there's very little that I've been doing naturally that doesn't have a purpose. A lot of my life since I became an adult, there's something that needs to be done. And therefore, a lot of my activity is with an outcome in mind. So that idea of play, actual true play, much easier when you have children because they'll drag you into it. But that idea of actually true, spontaneous, imaginative, whatever, is something that I think as adults we need to kind of get back to thinking about. So fourth is play. The last three are similar but different. So they are downtime, focus time and time in. All right, so I'm gonna talk about them each in turn. So downtime is not quite what you might think it is. So often when we talk about downtime, people assume that's leisure time, right? Downtime is when I'm going for a walk or uh, doing a painting. Those will be classed as hobbies, right? And they would be part of what we call focus time, which we'll come on to. And sometimes when we say downtime, people think of sport, but that will be part of physical time. Downtime is really lying around, sitting around with no purpose, right? Which again, as an adult, can sometimes feel like, what am I doing? I should be doing something. There's washing up to do be done or laundry, or I've got to take the kids to here or whatever. But one of the things that we've talked about when we talked about creativity, is that the brain makes new connections when you're relaxed and quiet and slightly happy, right? And you don't have anything else going on because it needs that time to mentally kind of explore, right? It's why that why you have uh, your best ideas in the shower room when you're driving because your brain is occupied but doing something quite routine and your the rest of your brain is left to wander. Right? And it's in mind wandering that we have some of our most creative thoughts and suggestions. So 
that downtime is not hobby time. You're not focusing on doing something specific. You're really just allowing yourself to sit right, with whatever it is you're doing and let stuff wash over you. Now, that might include watching TV. If you're in that place that I call where I'm not really watching, you know, where the TV's on in the background and I'm kind of letting the noise play through. If you're actually engrossed in the show, that would not count as downtime because your brain again is focused on something else. All right, so downtime. The flip of that is focus time. So focus time is when you are sitting down with a specific outcome you want to achieve. So whether that's through work or through a hobby, like finishing a painting or like I've been trying different things since we've been self-isolating, like making baskets and stuff, that would be focus time. I'm sitting down, with a purpose to try and finish a do an activity. <laughs> hey, I'll come on to that in a second. So Russ is saying downtime equals nap time. And that's fine. Um, downtime may mean nap time if you're not getting enough sleep too. And a nap is extremely restorative. So, you know, if your downtime ends up in you going to sleep, it's like when I do yoga, sometimes I fall asleep if I do yoga. Um, that's fine. That's feeding your brain another way. So if downtime ends up with you having a snooze, Maybe that's the thing that your brain needed most. Thank you for the comment though, very helpful. All right, so, um, so downtime is relaxing, mind wandering. Focus time is the opposite, it's concentration time. All right, and then the last one is time in, which is going a little bit further for me than downtime. Uh, time in is really practicing something like relaxation techniques or meditation. It's the the idea of intentional, um, focused self regulation, which is a big way of saying that we you know sit down with the purpose of exploring internally. So with meditation, for example, you're sitting down and allowing the thoughts to pass and focusing on your breathing or a candle or whatever it is that you're doing in your meditation practice the same with relaxation techniques you are intent on relaxing your body so you're not mind wandering in the same way as you would be with downtime you're actually practicing something to relax your body and relax your mind right so in a nutshell ideally you want all seven of those to show up in your life so good sleep so it's what they call sleep time physical time, connecting time, play time, downtime, focus time and time in. But like I said, sometimes when I talk to people, they're like, how do I fit all of that into a day? And I'm not sure that you do need to fit it all into a day. So like I said at the beginning, when we think about food, we don't eat every, every food group every time we sit down to dinner. We think about eating a well-rounded, balanced diet. And I think the same is true with a healthy mind platter. It's thinking about which ones of those do I have naturally woven through my life and which ones do I ne not necessarily spend a lot of time on. So for me, I don't have any problem with sleep. I could sleep forever. Right? So sleep's not an issue for me. Physical time, that's woven into my life. I go to the gym, I go for walks, all that kind of stuff. I look at some of the others and go play time. Okay, when do I actually, without the kids poking me, play? Right, what does that look like for me? How do I make sure I'm doing enough of that? Um, and between downtime and time in, making sure that I'm actually doing time in and not just downtime and making sure that I'm doing relaxation or meditation to some extent yoga um, for those things. So those are the ones that when I have that hour of time, rather than parking myself in front of the TV or doing something more focused, um, I'll go, maybe I should do playtime or do timing instead because those are the ones that don't more naturally fit into the rhythm of my particular life. And it will be different for everybody, but it's a, for me, it's a really useful way of thinking about, am I feeding my brain? Like we spend a lot of time thinking about how we feed our bodies and take care of ourselves and good nutrition and good diet. Your brain needs a good diet too. So I wanted to share that today with everything going on with the pandemic and thinking about mental wellness. Our anxiety levels are higher. The stress of the situation is different. We don't necessarily have the same connections that we did before. We can't necessarily do the same physical activities we did before. This is a useful framework for thinking about how do I ensure my overall mental, mental wellness. So I'll stop there. Um, if there are any questions please go ahead or comments. I really like Russ's comment. That was neat. Uh, and yes, naps are good. Uh, the guidance I was given when we did sleep studies was if you're going to nap, nap for 20 minutes or 90 minutes. So 20 minutes will give you a good energy boost. 90 minutes will allow you to go through a more of a REM cycle and so it will be more beneficial for your brain. If you sleep for 60, 
what tends to happen is you get into full sleep mode, but you don't get long enough to see the benefits. So when you wake up, you're kind of be in that groggy post sleep phase. So 20 or 90 is a better place to nap. If you, if you, if you can do that now that you're home. All right. So, um, we will do an edit of this version. And I will put up a visual on the screen so that you can see those seven uh, times when we're talking. That'll make it a little bit easier for you to follow along. And we do have like a healthy mind platter worksheet and that kind of thing. So if you're not on our mailing list, if you want to join that, you can join on the website. We send those types of tools out every month and tips and things. They're all free. You don't have to pay for anything. Um, they're there for you to use as you see fit. All right. Any questions from anyone or any other comments before I wrap up for today? Hello, Cindy. So, any other comments from anybody? Do those, hopefully those seven categories make sense to everyone? Okay. And now my job between now and next Monday is to go and figure out how to get blue jeans to talk to Facebook so I can do this without having to add an edit afterwards. I am not very technical. I'm very good at people and not so good at technology. All right, so it looks like we're good and there's no other comments or questions. Uh, so this will stay live until we um, do the edit. It'll still, you'll still be able to find this version on, on Facebook. Once we edit it and add the visual, we'll put it up on the YouTube page and we'll send that link out in the mailing list to everybody so it's there if you need it. All right, thanks Karen, thanks Russ. Hi Cindy, thank you everyone for tuning in this morning and I will see you next week and we'll see if I have conquered the Blue Jeans Facebook link at that time. Thanks everybody, you have a good week, take care, bye bye.